Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is Mark Lavar at BlenderPassion.com and I will be showing you how to create this professional text animation using Blender. Some of the topics we will cover in this tutorial include text animation, we will also create node-based materials and animate them to get the desired fade-in effect. For some of the more complex animations, we will be using shape keys and drivers to gain better control over the animation. And finally, we will be covering basic graph editor interpolations to polish the effect. And on that note, let's get started. So to start off, we're just going to delete everything from the scene, add a text object, and change the font type to what I'll be using is Lane Narrow. There will be other font types available in the description below. And the text I'll be using is BlenderPassion.com. So now I'll just start to add a simple material to it. But first I'll change the render to Cycles Render. And then go to the Screencast key add-on. Enable that and start the display. So then we'll create a new material, name it Text. And add a Mix Shader. A Transparency Shader. And an Emission Shader. And we're just not going to connect those up like that. And to the material output now. And then you can see how that looks right there. Now I have default values for many of the things. So I'll just be setting the background color to 0 0.017. And bump down the strength of the emission node. So now I'll go to the Dope Sheet Editor, and we're going to get ready to animate the text, or at least the material for it. So I'm going to go to frame 21 and set the fact value of the mix shader node to zero and then add a keyframe and then go to frame 36 and set the fact value to one and then add a keyframe there and then that will give us a nice fade in effect Now I'm going to add another text object. This will be our number object. And then I will also change the font type of that. And since it's already loaded, we can just use that button there. Move it over a bit. Scale it down. So now we're going to add in the circle mesh object and rename the objects just to keep things more organized. Scale that down a bit, move it over and orient it right on top of the number. And we want the origin of the number to be right where the origin of the circle is. That'll just give us better scaling. Now we can add in our material for our number. And we're, since we duplicated it like that, we just have to remove the keyframes. We're going to change that to a nice green color. And 
Now we can go to frame 9 and set the fac value of our mix shader to 0 and then set the keyframe and then go to frame 14 and set the fact value to 1, set the keyframe. And I already have preset scales for this, so I'll just be entering in those. And set the keyframe for scale. Then we're going to go to frame 22 and adjust the scale values. And then set the scale again. So now you can see that our number scales up just a slightly. And our scene is a bit out of proportion, so I'll just scale that down a bit. And adjust the position and scaling on everything else. Now I'll just add in a camera, move it up a bit, set the to orthographic, and orient it so our text fits. And just about like that, move it up a bit. Now we're just going to set the orthographic scale to be something that looks kind of decent. And there we go. And we're going to move this camera onto the second layer. So now to get a more dynamic effect for our scaling, we're just going to change the interpolation of its graph. It, the 2.7 build, there are all of these very colorful new objects, such as back, which will just give us that sort of little bounce effect, I guess you could call it. And we're going to be doing something like that, except it'll be manually. We're going to be editing the Bezier curve. So the important thing here is to make sure that you select all of the X, Y, and Z values. And the top handle, just rotate that and scale it up a bit. And that gives us a much more emphasized and exaggerated little bounce effect. So now we can just add the material for the circle. Change the name. And of course we're going to delete the keyframes, if I can find them, and there they are. And I'm going to set the scale to a default, well not really a default, but an experimental value that I've used before, just so things can move better without any experimenting in this video. So we're going to frame 7, we're going to set the fac to 0, set the keyframe, and frame 8, set it to 1. So now I'm going to just tab into edit mode here, and press E to extrude, scale that in a bit, and this will just give us a very nice effect. We want the inner ring to scale outwards as the entire circle scales out. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. So we're just going to add some shape keys to do that. And trust me, without adding these shape keys, it just has a very boring effect. But actually, we're just going to create another circle 
and change the vertices to 64. That'll just give us some better resolution. Now set the scale again. Now we can work with the inner ring here. So now we're just going to add some shape keys in here. The basis shape key. And another shape key that I will name shrink. Actually, I'm going to rename it Grow. And then we can select the basis. And we're just going to turn on vertex snapping and put the inner loop onto the outer loop. And that will give us a sort of vanish effect once the circle reaches its maximum scale. So that it won't be shown in the rendered view anymore. So I'm going to open up the graph editor here. Change from F curve to drivers. And we're going to select grow and add a driver to the value. And then we can select it. And we're going to change the values on it. We're going to change the expression to negative open parentheses var minus 0.274. And then we're going to multiply all of that by 5. So you can see we have a minus here and that negates the entire effect. We have our var here, which corresponds with the var down here. And then we have a minus 0.274, which is the original scale of our circle. And then we're multiplying that by 5 to give us a more emphasized look. So now we can change the object to circle, change the type to whichever scale, it'll work with either scale, and change to local space. So now you can see our value here should correspond with the value in our expression. So now as we scale, you'll notice no difference, however we can fix that. Just tap in edit mode, scale the inner loop back down again, make sure you are on the grow shape key, and then you'll notice our scaling difference here. Has a nice effect. So now if we set a scaling keyframe there at frame 8, then go to frame 22, Oh wait, whoops. First we're going we're going to set the scaling value down here at frame 8 to a lower value. Something around 0 0.002 I find works best for me. Then we're going to frame 22 and then we're going to set the scale back to 0.274 which is the original value. Save it. And if we just give that a quick render, you'll see that for some reason our circle is not showing up. So apparently I forgot to set the scale keyframe at frame 22. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. And then make sure you set the scale keyframe. And so now if we give that a render we'll see that our circle is scaling up perfectly. Just need to add a material to it. And then we're going to make that a single user material. And rename it. 
Now we're going to find the keyframes that we've duplicated. And there they are. I'm just going to delete those. Now we're going to go to frame 7. We're going to set the fac of the mix shader to 0, add the keyframe. Go to frame 8, set it to 1, and add the keyframe there. So now if we gave that a quick render, We can see that everything looks perfectly fine. Now I'm going to show you how to create the header that I made. So I'm going to add another text object, move it up a bit, change the font, and change the actual text. And we'll just position it correctly. Now we can add the material for it. I'll just start over again so I don't have to delete the keyframes. Add a mix shader. An emission shader. And a transparent shader. And then we can just connect everything up and to just bump down the strength a bit. I'm going to connect that to the material output. And then we're going to add a plane. And this will be covering our text. If you remember from the beginning, there was a sort of fade in effect that the header used. And then we're just going to move this side over a bit. And we're going to go to the Preferences and to File. And make sure you have Auto Run Python Scripts enabled. And that will just stop any error messages from shape keys appearing. And what we want this cover to do is we want it to cover the text, however we don't want it to show up in the actual render. So as you can see our text is still showing up, and that's due to something called Z-fighting. You can see the little artifacts here. That's because the plane and the text are on the exact same Z-value spot. So we're just going to move the plane up quite a bit. And then you can see it is completely covering our text, except we have this ugly gray box. So we're going to fix that. Add a new material. And it's very simple to set up. Add a light path node. And connect the is camera ray to the color input of our diffuse shader. And you will see that we're not rendering it anymore. And it is succeeding in covering our text. However, it's still not ideal. We want a sort of gradient effect to fade in this text, which node-wise is very simple to set up. However, theory-wise can be a little more difficult to someone who is new to the node editor. So we're just going to move that over, well maybe not. There we go, get a little more space. We're going to add a texture coordinate node, a vector mapping node, and of course a gradient texture. Now we're just going to connect those nodes up. Make sure you have grabbed the generated output from the texture coordinate.
And then I'm going to add in a transparent shader. And now a mix shader. And connect that to the material output. Now we can see our gradient texture effect. It's still not ideal, but we are getting there. We want it to go to the other side. Just flip it around, I guess you could say. So we're going to put a small value into the X location and change the Z value to 180 degrees. So now you can see we have our desired effect. However, we do want more control over this gradient effect. So we're just going to move things over a bit, get a bit more room. And we're going to add in a color ramp node. And then we are going to set, we're going to select this white marker here, and we're going to set the position to 0.141 I find works best for me. So then you can see we have our very nice effect here. The left line of our rectangular plane is now gone, and giving it a very nice and smooth gradient effect. However, we don't want all of this black box left around. So, to fix that, we need a value in the mix shader fac input to change that. However, you can see that no numeric value will give us the best result. So we are simply going to take the output of the gradient texture, and we're going to stick that right into the fac value of the mix shader. And that gives us our desired effect. So we are pretty much almost done here. There are still a few things that we need to fix. I don't know if you can see it on my screen, but there is a slight black box around our plane. And to fix that, well, if you don't have that, then you can just skip this step. But if you do have it, just add in a converter color ramp node, add that to the node line here, and change the position of the black marker to 0 0.068, and that will just remove that black box there. So then we're just going to take this edge here, and we're going to move that over until we can no longer see any of the text. And there we go. There's one more little thing we need to fix. It is the interpolation of the circle. As you can see, I have already changed it. I changed it from Bezier curve to a sinusoidal curve. And I find that sinusoidal works best. If you go any higher, the curve will be much too steep and it won't give you a nice smooth effect. So I'll just change that back to sinusoidal and that will just give us a nice easing effect on our scaling of the circle. Well, if this tutorial has helped you in any way, please subscribe. You can download the finished project files directly off of BlenderPassion.com. And thank you for watching.